uh, man manipulation control of body movement and uh, submission grappling is, is more of a, it's a balling style of uh, controlling uh, position and um, a little bit of, uh, it's almost the same in, in a sense, but it's not. So Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu primarily focuses on submission? Yeah, the and they're usually traditional the with the uh, what they call the kimono. And um, submission grappling is um, just usually, uh, you know, skin-to-skin -skin contact. Okay. And um, in your training, are you experienced or do you, do you both train and teach? Yes, Okay. I do. So have you been trained personally that in fighting, when you uh, square with an opponent, do you are you trained in coming in with combinations? Yes. And um, what's the, would you say the most common combinations that you actually teach your students? Um, in jiu-jitsu or in fighting in general? Um, in, in, in stand up as you're approaching prior to um, grappling, prior to uh, having close contact. Um, a clinch, a clinch um, with control and um, maybe a dominant position. And if you were to come in striking, yes. um, what would be a combination that you, um, your primary com combination that you would teach your students? Um, would to be lead with punches, punches first. And would you, um, would it be a combination of punches and kicks? Uh, yes, it can, it can, it, it varies, depends, yeah, it can be mixed up. And um, is it very common in a combination to come through with um, a, a left-right kick or a right-left kick depending on uh, whether you're right or left-handed? Yes. Can you describe the difference, or first, do you have knowledge of what's called a seatbelt? Yes. Um, can you describe what a seatbelt is and how that compares to a choke? Yes. A uh, seatbelt harness is um, a positionary control. It's not choking at all. It's, um, it's just a way to control a position, which is on your uh, opponent's back. And they call it seatbelt harness because one arm comes over the top of the chest of the torso, and the other under the abdominal area, and the hands are grasped together to control position. Um, now, from there, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to choke someone because you're pretty much hugging their body, and you're, you're a little bit over the neck. I guess it's touching, but you're not, your main focus is not the neck. You know, your hands lock maybe by the sternum area, by the chest, but it's more for controlling a, um, your opponent and controlling the position. Okay. Um, for a better understanding, uh, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to ask you to demonstrate that on me. Sure. Um, do you know Mr. Copenhaver? Yes. And how long have you known him for? Um, since I was 17 years old. So about 10 years now. Okay. And did you ever train with Mr. Copenhaver? Yes. Um, in mid-2014, were you training with Mr. Copenhaver at that time? Um, yes, off and on. Yeah, off and on, because um, I was in San Diego, and I believe he was training in Las Vegas. But yeah, during the year, yeah, we were training. Yeah. And throughout that period of time in training with Mr. Copenhaver, did you become familiar with his uh, conditioning? Um, yes, I noticed him, um, you know, being a little bit different, um, you know, like forgetting which days we had sparring on, which days, you know, um, like, you know, we train every day almost, but certain days we did certain things, and uh, he would show up with a certain equipment and be like, oh, we're doing this today, and he'd be like, oh man, I thought that was the other day, you know. Like, um, you know, on, on Tuesdays we would spar, and maybe he shows up on Monday thinking it's Tuesday, and you know, like the day we're gonna spar, but it's actually the next day. Now, on around that time, did you and Mr. Copenhaver uh, train together? Um, for example, did you guys roll together? Yes. Yes. And um, uh, so the jury understands. Can you explain what I mean by rolling? Yes, rolling. Um, we we practice together um, in a training session. It's what we call it. And um, submission grappling and jujitsu. It's a mix. You know, um, sometimes we'd start from our feet, um, and then uh, of course it always ends up on the ground. And um, you know, we um, practice uh, various. Um, techniques to put each other in these positions um, of control and um, submission. And when you would have these practices, how long would drills go for? Um, drills were usually an hour to two hours. Yeah, sometimes rolling um, means it's like live sparring pretty much, meaning where, uh, you know, it could go on for two hours, you know, just depending on how much you wanted to train that day, how tired you were. Yeah. And so when training for approximately two hours, um, if you guys were rolling, is this intense rolling? 
Always, 100%, you know, um, because uh, uh, as you know, you know, he competed and I compete myself. So you want to simulate uh, the, the most extreme atmosphere you can at the same sense of, you know, trying not to get injured, but you want to impose that, that type of um, extreme training so that when you get in the situation of competition that, you know, you're able to handle it and be more calm and uh, aware of no, be more aware and know what's going on. Yeah, to control it. Okay, so uh, around, um, let's say, August of 2014, um, would you say that uh, both your and Mr. Cup neighbor's conditioning, you guys were able to go intense, uh, rolling for approximately two hours? Yes. Okay. Now, do you have experience when it comes to choke holds with Mr. Cup neighbor? Yes. Um, Have you ever choked Mr. Kobenaver unconscious? Um, no. Has Mr. Kobenaver ever choked you unconscious? Yes. And that's happened uh, on multiple occasions, correct? Yes. And was this through training? Yes. Now you fight in the UFC, is that correct? Um, no, I've never fought in the UFC. I've competed in Strike Force and uh, Bellator. <laughs> And in fighting, have you applied the uh, choke hold in the ring? Yes. And have you had the choke hold applied on you in the ring? Um, yes. And um, are you aware that Mr. Copenhaver, um, at one point, uh, in addition to Bellator, he also fought in the UFC? Yes. And through your training and experience, um, are you aware of how many deaths that there's been by choke holds in the UFC? Objection, Your Honor. Bellas. Now, you're over 10 years of fighting as a professional fighter. Are you aware of any chokeholds causing death in the UFC ever? No, I'm not. So your question was limited to UFC? Are you aware of any chokeholds um, causing death in uh, Bellator? No, I am not. Thank you. And are you aware of any chokeholds causing death in any sport of MMA? No, I am not. Now, you said that you would train with Mr. Copenhaver and that he's put you unconscious, correct? Yes, sir. And this was part of training? Yes, sir. And um, are you aware of how long it would take to apply a chokehold on somebody before causing death? Yes, Right, that, that would be getting into an area of expertise, I would think. Or if you want to come up, we can talk further. Otherwise, I'm sustaining. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I would like to approach. Okay, come up.
Now you see Mr. Copenhaver choke uh, either students or other uh, athletes unconscious, correct? Yes. In including yourself? <clears throat> yes. Um, now when a chokehold is applied properly, um, how long have you seen it take uh, before Mr. Copenhaver has put somebody into an unconscious state? Um, it can take, you know, three to five minutes, you know, depending on how much energy the person has to defend. Um, you know, and depends on the situation. Like I said, when we're in training, we try to try to make it um, as close to competition level as possible. So you know, we're we're not just gonna let them do it. We're gonna fight and, and hold it off. And um, either you wear or they wear. But it could, like I said, you know, some people are more defensive than others, and they have better control of defending it well. So. And when the chokehold is applied properly, yes. um, I know that there's many different chokeholds, and I'm going to ask you to describe some of them. Um, are you familiar with uh, taking back control yes. and putting the crease of the elbow directly to the throat? Yes. And what is that choke typically called? Uh, the rear naked choke. What? And, uh, rear naked choke. Rear naked? Rear naked choke, Thank yes, ma'am. Okay. And in this rear naked choke, if applied properly, yes. uh, isn't it true that that can take approximately three to five seconds to put somebody unconscious? Yes, because depending on where exactly the pressure is applied, um, because there's two things that are happening. One is... Objection, Your Honor. This is getting the expert testimony. Great. Sustained. We'll take that for another minute. I'm going to move on to a different line of questioning. Go ahead. Um, all right, so you were describing earlier the difference between a seatbelt and uh, a choke. Yes. Uh, and the seatbelt, what is the purpose of the seatbelt? Is to control position of your opponent to, um, you know, um, set yourself up to apply the choke. But it's also a position to control them, to wear them down, so you have, you know, full control of your opponent <coughs> before you apply the choke. So, uh, like I said, it's not choking them at all, you know, and it's pretty hard to do. Uh, do you remember your first time being choked unconscious? Um, I do not. I don't remember that yet. Uh, now, is there a certain sequence that you would follow if you were trying to gain somebody's uh, back control to put them, put them in a choke? Do you go straight for the choke or is, do you follow a sequence in putting them into a choke? Um, yeah, you got to control the position first. And there's various ways of getting to that position, you know. Various. Okay, and um, let's talk about a common position. Do you know um, what I'd be referring to if I refer to something as what's commonly known as the turtle? Yes. And uh, what is the turtle? Turtle is when you're in the fetal position down on all fours, um, elbows down, knees in together, and um, establishing back control from there. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm going to stop you for one second. So um, just to clarify for the jury, when we're talking yes. about the turtle, this would be the opponent on yes. his knees tucked into a fetal position, is that yes. correct? Yes. And then as, um, let's call him, refer to as the athlete, as the athlete behind him at this time, he would be taking position on the turtle, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, now what is the sequence if you were looking to put somebody in the choke um, that you would be applying at that time uh, while the other person's in the turtle position? Um, you would get what some call backpack. Um, you would want to get a, a, a controlled position. You need to get your feet inside um, of their thighs first to control the position because uh, otherwise, you know, if they bump forward side to side or anything, then if you don't base and you go for the choke, then you could slam your head or you'll fall right off, you know. So first you have to control the position before you can apply the choke. Yeah. Okay, so let's say you were attempting to control the position yes. while applying the choke and you lose your position. Right. Um, and yet you still have your arms of, at the point in time where you were going for the choke. Yes. At that point in time, do you continue to attempt to choke or do you go back to um, trying to gain control? No, you always go back to gain control because if you don't, then the, the percentage of finishing the choke is, is, is low because you have no control of the position to finish the choke, to apply it on. You will fall right off. Yeah. Okay, so as uh, an athlete, yes. um, or uh, taking the backpack position on yes. the turtle, uh, and then the next uh, sequence after applying the uh, seatbelt, would you be applying your heel hooks at that time? Um, at that time, you would already have your hooks in. 
Okay, so it would be established on the position. You would have your hooks and the seat belt harness. Seat belt harness again comes controls the upper torso, and the hooks control the lower part of the body, meaning somewhat of the hips and the the legs. And then um, once you have your hooks in and you have uh, the seat belt position, is it at that point in time that you now have back control? Yes. And then from that point in time, um, would the next step be applying the choke? Yes, it can, but that's if they're sitting still. Now, if they're moving around and they're jumping and trying to get you off of their back, then no, it's hard to do because you have to balance and control the position. You know, it takes a lot of, a lot of strength and, you know, um, to control the position and you have to make sure you're maneuvering right. You can't just go straight to the choke because like I said before, if you don't have control of the position, you'll fall right off and there will be no choke. Yeah. Okay, so you had mentioned if they're jumping around. Yes. Um, if they're jumping around, is at that point in time, would you be able to choke them or are you still trying to gain control? Uh, it's, uh, you can't say no, it's possible, but it's very hard. It's okay. very, very hard, you know. You want to focus on controlling first. Um, okay, and so let's say for, uh, hypothetically speaking, if somebody had a backpack, uh, let's say you had a backpack position on somebody else, yes. and they were able to stand, yes. and they ran you back into, let's say, the cage or into a wall for that matter, yes. um, and that ended up breaking your seatbelt, would you then have to start over? Yes, it's possible. I mean, multiple things can happen. One, you might fall off their back and they might turn in and face you. You might slide down. So you, again, yeah, it, it makes it hard to control the position. And uh, the force can, you know, open up your arms and, you know, you slip off. You know, it depends on the situation, if you're bloody, if you're sweaty or not. And usually when you're bloody and sweaty, it's, it's, it's more hard to hold on because now you're slippery. It's, you know, so. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, can I uh, approach the uh, witness? I would like him to demonstrate the difference between a chokehold and a seatbelt. Um, sure, I'm okay with that, but if he's going to be speaking when doing it, he needs to be on a mic or perhaps we can get him a handheld if he can keep, if someone can hold it while doing it. But, um, if, the, if the witness was able to approach um, to where I'm standing right now around this microphone, sure. would that be sufficient for the court? Should be, we'll let you know. Do you mind stepping down? Please. All right, go ahead. Do you mind if I remove my coat? Please. Okay, so at this time, if you may, please demonstrate to the jury. Let's go by the microphone so you can pick them. Okay. Uh, if you were to take the uh, back control of me and place myself into a rear naked choke um, without putting your heel hooks in, uh, because I won't be able to stand at that time, okay. um, would you please demonstrate uh, what a rear naked choke is? Yes, this is a rear naked choke here. This is where the arms are completely around. I can't hold our hands. Why don't we, if we give Mr. Lederman the mic and go over there, just make sure it's on. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We can hold that up so they can be heard. That would be great. <laughs> okay, so our rear naked choke is here. Get closer, Mr. Lederman. One arm comes around fully. This arm just comes and grabs the bicep, and this hand slides behind the head. And now, when I apply pressure, I'll be taking away the oxygen and blood flow to the brain, which causes you. Objection, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, okay, sorry, I couldn't quite tell what he was saying. But, um, just to just describe what you're doing, and I guess just describe what you're doing oh, and the goal of it. Actually, he stopped himself. Um, now, if you could please explain to the jury what the difference is between the rear naked choke that you just put on me and the seat belt. Okay, so the rear naked choke, as you saw, was around the neck completely. Both arms were viced around elbow to elbow. Um, now, this is called a seat belt harness. What we use in jiu-jitsu or submission grappling. This comes over the top of the torso by the neck. This comes under the bottom. Now, we call it seat belt position because the way it is strapped on, as you can see, is a seat belt on the car comes across here and it also comes across the abdominal. So we call this position the seat belt. Now, like I said before, it'd be hard to try to choke someone here because the arm is in the way, right? So when we do a rear naked choke, we're not on the arm, right? There's nothing around the arm. To block the arms from closing in, 
and taking the oxygen away from um, the individual, right? So now, if I try to choke him, do you, are you choking? No. Are you choking? No. Okay, I'm really squeezing. <laughs> okay, so now in applying the, um, the seatbelt, if you can go back to the seatbelt. Yes. Okay, so I, I noticed that when you had it go back up, yes. you had it real high, and yes. you're leveraging in, in this position because yes. of the way I'm standing, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so now going back down a little bit, um, in this seatbelt position right here, yes. uh, do, you, do you put your students in this position when taking back control and instructing and communicating back and forth? Yes. And going back to the rear naked choke real quick? Yes. You don't expect your students to be able to talk when applying pressure, is that correct? No. So you can't communicate? Can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. So, for the record, he just tapped um, the witness's arm to get out of that hole. Okay, you can go back to the witness. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lederman, for your oh, assistance. My pleasure. Thank you. Mr. Otto, thank you for the uh, demonstration. Yes, sir. Uh, nothing further this time. Okay, Ross. Mr. Toronto, how long have you known Mr. Copenhagen? Um, like I said, since I was about 17 years old. Where did you meet? Um, at the gym. At the gym? Yes, sir. And were you training to become a fighter at that time? Yes. Right. And uh, Mr. Copenhagen was already a fighter at that time? Yes. Um, he looks different today than he did when you last saw him, correct? Um, different how? Like, Is he s smaller in muscle mass? Mm, I can't tell with his shirt on. Okay. okay. So it's not obvious that he's smaller than. Uh, a little bit. Looks like he's lost a little bit of weight. Yeah. Okay. When was the um, last time you saw him? Probably 2014, three years ago. Okay. Was it before or after August 8th of 2014? Uh, before. You trained in San Diego with uh, Mr. Copenhamer. Yes, sir. All right. When you trained. Uh, did you ever have discussions with him? Uh, discussions about discussions life. about life in general. Um, <coughs> sometimes, not really. Mostly, it was strictly about training. You know, we just I was there to train and learn. Right. Yeah. Work is work. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, did you ever go out with him socially? Um, yeah, here and there we went out. Yeah. You guys were good friends. Yes. And uh, during those social scenes, you guys discussed his business that he ran. <clears throat> Um, which one business? What business? Uh, well, you tell me which businesses did he run? Um, all I'm aware of would be the Alpha Male clothing. Okay. Yeah, I didn't discuss it because it was none of my business, but I knew about it, yeah. Are you a partner in that business? No. Okay. That Alpha Male clothing uh, company was a successful business? Um, I, I don't know. I, like I said, I didn't ask him about it. It was none of my business. I didn't pry into it. Okay. Yeah. I just knew of it. He never told you about any troubles, though, he was having with it? Um, no, nothing. Like I said, I never asked. You know, I knew about it, but yeah, that's okay. about it. Uh, and he marketed it fairly well, correct, on the internet? Um, yeah, I would see posts about it. Yeah, on my feed, my Facebook and uh, Twitter, I guess, yeah. Would you ever retweet his tweets? Yeah, of course. And that was related to the Alpha Male Clothing Company? Um, I'm sure I have, yeah, to help him out, to help him promote his business, yeah. All right. right. Uh, you've spoken to defendant about um, other things other than fighting, correct? Family, other sports, um, politics. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I don't know about politics, but yeah. Just other items that come oh, up. Correct, yes, yes. Okay. And he's fairly educated? Um, yeah. yeah. Smart, he can hold a conversation with oh, you? Of course, yeah. yeah. Was he very knowledgeable about animals? Um, yeah, but he never really had too much of those discussions with me. Yeah. yeah. Do you know whether he had any animals? Um, yes, uh, I knew he had a snake and a ferret. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I want to show you it's been admitted as Exhibit 208. Do you recognize these two individuals? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me who the female is in the background there. Um, that is um, Christy Matt. Okay. And tell me who the individual is here. Uh, that's John Copenhaver. 
And in this picture here, is Mr. Copenhaver larger in this photo, or is he larger in person today? Um, well, he's sleeveless here, so he looks larger here. Okay. So I can actually see his, yeah, his frame. Okay. When you say here, you mean in the picture? Yes, I'm sorry, in the picture. Yes. Okay. But to you, it's not obvious one way or another. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit now it is, yeah, now that you pointed it out, yes. Uh, I don't want to get into the details of this, um, but have you ever promoted, if you'll answer yes or no, have you ever promoted um, a uh, GoFundMe account on behalf of the defendant? Um, not that I remember. It's possible, but I don't remember, you know, I don't remember. It's okay. been a while. Have you ever donated to a GoFundMe account on behalf of the defendant? No. Never? No. Um, you talked about um, how there have been no, um, at least as far as you're aware, there have been no strangulation deaths in the in fighting in general, as far mixed as UFC goes, or mixed martial arts, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, um, no, I'm not aware of any strangulation deaths, no. Okay, and you've been in mixed martial arts for how long? Um, I've been competing as a professional since 2008. And before that, you were a fan, correct? Yes, sir. You followed it closely? Um, well, I was in middle school, high school, so. Okay, as, as close, close as, as I could. could. Yeah, as close as I could, yeah. All right. Um, are you aware of how many battery domestic violence strangulation deaths occur? No, I'm not. You could understand that battery domestic violence situations are far different than UFC situations, correct? Um, I, I, I don't know if I can say that, uh, but I, I guess they are, yeah. Well, because they're, it's not a competition yet. That's okay. What asking. Yeah, that's correct. And battery domestic violence situations are often driven by passion, correct? Objection, uh, cost of speculation. I'll try. Uh, the, there's not, well, there is a uh, referee or an umpire in the UFC cages, correct? Yes, sir. And people can tap out when they're getting choked out. Yes, sir. So people then can, at that point, the referee steps in to break it up, correct? Yes, sir. And there's punishments if people don't let go upon counsel of the referee. Yes, sir. In battery domestic violence strangulation cases, you're aware there's no referee, correct? Yes, sir. What's the purpose of the referee at the UFC fights? Uh, to ensure the fighter's safety. The... Um, you stated that um, um, one of the things that would play a factor, at least, is it would relate to UFC chokes and uh, chokeouts. You said that there's a possibility it, it could take three to five minutes, and it depended on a variety of circumstances. What are those circumstances? Um, just, you know, defense. Um, like I said on the, the other fighter, you, they're not going to... It depends. Is it in competition or is it just in life general? Because in both situations, there's adrenaline, so you know you're going to do everything in your personal will to avoid it. You know, um, if you've watched UFC fights, sometimes the guy has the back control, and it could be the whole round, and he tries to apply the choke, but the guy has very good defense. That being because the person that is on the back is not as experienced as the person that's in the position. So there's. Yeah. Okay. And it is stamina? Yes. Um, exhibit 208 again. Uh, Ms. McAdoo, are you familiar whether or not she's a trained fighter? I'm sorry? Are you familiar whether or not she's a trained MMA fighter? Um, no, I'm sure she's not. Yeah. You're uh, aware that she's significantly smaller than Mr. Copenhaver? Yes. You've seen her in person, correct? Yes, sir. Um, the Are you familiar with any of the events that happened on August 8th of 2014? Um, yes, just what I've been, like everyone else, you know, on the news. And, you know. uh, have you ever spoken to an individual by the name of Phil Baroni? Um, yeah, a little bit, like 2011, at, um, it was at a fight that we were both at. Okay. Who is Phil Baroni? Um, he, I don't know if he currently is, but was a professional mixed martial artist also. Uh, who's your trainer? Um, now? Yeah. Currently? Well, I have a striking coach, but I don't have a trainer anymore. Um, okay. 
Who was your last trainer? Um, I was coached under, for my last big fight was in 2014 in Bellator, uh, was uh, Barrett Yoshida helped coach me, and um, also my striking coach, Nestor. Uh, did you have a manager? Or did you have a manager when you were fighting? Uh, yeah, I did. Who was that? Um, it was uh, Brian Hamper. Are you familiar with the name Ken Pavia? Uh, yeah, I know who he is. Yes. Special relevance or honor, motion to strike. May I approach? Yeah, come on up, counsel. <coughs> May I proceed with that question, Your Honor? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, do you know a Ken Pavia? Yes, sir. And who's Ken Pavia? Uh, at the time when we met was uh, Jonathan Copenhaver's um, manager. Okay. And you've never worked with Ken Pavia? No, never worked with him, but um, he, he has offered me some uh, fights, but I never took them. Okay. So is he more of a promoter or is he a manager? Um, he was a manager. I believe he doesn't have his managing license anymore, if I'm not sure. If I'm correct, I believe. Yeah. Did Mr. Poppy ever contact you regarding events that occurred on August 8th of 2014? No. So the only thing you know is what's been reported by the media? Yes. Um, so uh, regarding the different uh, chokes that you demonstrated here with uh, Mr. Sua for us, you don't know whether any of that was actually applied in, on August 8th of 2014? Um, yeah, I've been following a little bit, and um, based on um, uh, Corey Thomas's testimony, I watched a little bit of it, and he was explaining that it was applied on him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and which chokes did Mr. Thomas say he applied? Uh, I don't know. I remember if he called it the Renegade choke, but, you know, a choke, and I remember him saying how he was defending it, slipping his hands in. Okay. So I assume that was the Renegade choke, right? So oh. the arms all the way around his neck. So you assume, but you don't know? Yeah, um, based on what he's saying. You know, I didn't see it, so okay. if I saw it, if I was there, then I could tell you, yeah, but I can't, I didn't see the choke happening, so I can't say yes or no. Okay. And you're familiar that he said there was no seatbelt choke that was applied then since you watched uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. Just brief parts of it, you know, like I kind of skimmed through. I didn't, like, watch it over and over. Yeah. Did you watch that at the request of the defense? No. You watched uh, it because you're interested? No, uh, well, it, it was on media, on social media, I believe, or something, so I posted it, so I just clicked it. Okay. So you watch it because you're just purely interested? Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to see what's going on. Yeah, I wanted to see. Because Mr. Copenhaver is your friend? Correct. Um, how many um, times has the defense contacted you over the phone? Um, via text or call? Uh, let's go with call first and then we'll get to text. Call maybe four or five times four, four or times. five times yeah four, four times all right and how many times via text um text more than 10 um consisting of you know transportation things so yeah okay uh do you have your cell phone on you today yes um the four to five times on the phone yes. um when was the initial phone call from the defense uh, the very first one? Yes, correct. Um, if I believe was a couple weeks ago. Was that before or after this trial started? Uh, before. And they told you the substance of your testimony? Um, I don't understand. What do you mean the substance? Uh, they, they told you what you'd be testifying to today. That you'd testify regarding naked chokehold, seatbelt. Oh, yes, 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 definitely, yes. All right. Uh, and how long did that first phone call last? 
Um, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, all in total, during the four or five phone calls, how long have you spoken to the defense regarding this? Um, it was kind of a phone tag thing, trying to get back and forth each other about transportation, getting here to testify. So the first one was probably the longest. Okay. Guaranteed, yeah. So all in all, you think you've spoken for them for a total of maybe two hours, or is that a little high? Um, I guess, yeah. About, yeah, about. About two hours? Um, I, I just want to be safe, you know, I don't want to say yes or no, because I don't remember. Okay, like, you know, when people answer. call you, it was two minutes, you know, one minute. Um, so yeah, I guess, yeah. Okay. Um, of course, of buildings. Just a couple more areas of questions for you, Mr. Tirado. Yes, sir. The, um, you've never seen him, Mr. Copenhagen, just fly off the handle randomly. Um, like, what do you mean? In a, let's, uh, have you ever seen him? Oh, uh, no, I've seen, I've seen heated situations in the gym where, you know, because like I said, the training gets extensive where we hit each other and you get a little mad and you want to get him back, but... Yeah, that's pretty much it. So when he's being attacked or when he's uh, in a fighting situation, then he can get enraged? Um, it depends. Anyone does. You know, even me, myself, you know, like when you're with your training partners and maybe some you might have the upper hand on them, meaning like, you know, you're better than them. But one day they might just, that's their day and you're off and they just kick your butt that day and, you know, you want revenge. So you just like <laughs> fight out of that kind of anger, like, oh, I'm going to get you it's back to competition. Today. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, moment, yeah. But when he's just kind of hanging out at the pool or the beach or at yes. dinner, you've never seen him just lose it? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. He's pretty calm. He's pretty, pretty chill. Calm most Unless time. you're like antagonizing like anyone else, then he'll defend himself, you know? Okay. Yeah. But he doesn't go out of his way and be like, oh, you know, like, what are you doing? You know, and freak out. Okay. Um, Without reason, I guess, you know, is what I'm saying. Okay. Um, and the defendant, um, have you ever seen him use steroids? Um, I knew about it, but... He told you about it? Yeah. I mean, everyone. I mean, the gym guys know. We talk, you know what I mean? So uh -huh. we're aware of it, yeah. Okay. And when was the last time you were aware that he injected or partook in steroids? Um, when we were probably, when we were training together, getting ready for a fight. I think that was like, what, four or five years ago? 2013, getting ready for a Bellator fight. In 2013? Yeah, I was aware of it, yeah. And uh, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming you're not supposed to be using steroids when you're fighting? Yeah, correct. Um, uh, steroids are, uh, we call it PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. Okay. Yeah. And so you're not supposed to? Um, not in competition, no. But um, yeah, the leading up to the competition, I don't know. Yeah. That's different. But whatever, in general, yeah, you're right. In competition, you can't use it. It's okay. outlawed, yes. Okay. And correct. they test for it? Yes. <clears throat> The uh, performance enhancing uh, drugs, uh, do you know how it was that the um, defendant was able to obtain those? Um, I don't. He never spoke to you that he was under No, I wouldn't care. ask him and be like, hey man, would you get your stuff? No, I don't know. It's none of my business. People's, is it a kind of a taboo topic in the, in the fighting world to talk about? No, it's just like, um, hey man, like, uh, oh, I got this injury or whatever. Oh, someone says, oh, well. I, you know, you should take this or that, that'll help you, this and that, and da da da, basically, or check it out online, you know, it's easy, everyone goes online, you know what I mean, you want to kind of get a, some kind of education before you put something in your body, at least I would, you know what I mean, I'm scared, like, oh, he said take it, so I'm going to take it, you know what I mean, I wouldn't do that, you know? okay. kind of educate myself first, be like, you know, they tell you, eat the poison berries, you know what I mean, like, you're going to get strong, you're going to die, you know what I mean, it's poison berries, so, okay. right? So you don't know whether or not the defendant was under doctor's care uh, when he was using No, it. I didn't ask him, so it was just, yeah. I'll pass the witness. Redirect.
prosecution talked about size a little bit. Uh, when it comes to uh, jujitsu, yes. What's more, what uh, plays a more substantial role in a success in a fight? Is it experience or is it size? Uh, experience and technique, definitely. Uh, what's your coach's name? Um, currently, I have a new coach, um, but my coach that I trained with, John, was Barry Yoshida. And how tall is Barry Yoshida? I think he's like 5'7", five, 5'6". Five, and approximately how much did he weigh? Probably like 140. Um, so 45. compared to most of the fighters in the gym, relatively small. Yes. Correct? Yeah. And as the coach, um, yeah. he pretty much dominated everybody in there, right? Yeah, he's, he dropped the hammer, destroyed us all for sure. <laughs> War machine, I mean, John Copenhaver included. Right. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to uh, Mr. Copenhaver's, you had mentioned that he would show up to practices and he would bring the wrong gear um, or he didn't know what day it was. Uh, so the jury understands what's the difference of uh, no gi and your full uh, full gi days. Okay, so like I said before, gi is is what uh, this is like slang term what they call it now, but the old school, um, old fashioned term is kimono, and it's a, it's like a suit and it's um, it's durable. It's meant to be pulled and um, it can be used in various you know it can be used to choke. It can be used to control a position. Um, now the no gi is. You know, usually you wear a pair of shorts and sometimes no shirt, or you can wear a regular t-shirt or what's called a rash guard where it's a skin tight compression shirt. And um, you, you train like that. So it's two different things. So you're wearing uh, a suit that's, you know, maybe three pounds, it depends. You know, there's different kind of brands and different kind of makes, just like Calvin Klein and Armani makes suits. You know, there's different kinds. Some weigh more than others, but their purpose is to be pulled and grabbed on, so for leverage and you know to set to use techniques. You know, and no gi, you don't have those leverage points. You just have to go off of you know control of the body. You know, so. And on the no gi days, what was uh, Mr. Copenhaver commonly wearing? Um, uh, sleeveless t-shirt and uh, pair of shorts. Okay, and so sometimes he would be showing up with uh, the wrong gi or the wrong clothes. Yeah, um, more so in sparring, like sometimes, you know, like the wrong gloves, you know, like we usually sparred with the small gloves and, you know, on the other days he would use bigger gloves to hit pads with. So, you know, some days he would forget that sparring and instead of hitting pads and he would bring the opposite gloves. So, you know, he can't spar with those big boxing gloves. You can't wrestle and grab. We use the smaller ones. They're like the official gloves. So that way your fingers are free so you're able to grab and submit and grapple. Okay, so other than common um, forgetfulness of his bringing the wrong clothing, bringing the wrong equipment. Yeah. Was there other things that extended outside of the gym or training, like forgetting where he parked his car? Um, yeah, or like even around. like dates of, you know, events that we had, or, you know, like a, if I had a my son's birthday party or something, I would tell him, and he'd be like, oh, man, well, I thought it was the next week or something like that. Or, yeah, you know, uh, there was times where he told me he went to the mall in the parking lot, and he, he got lost because he totally forgot where he parked his Checking car. Checking your signal. So. Yeah, so the jury will disregard that last part. In regards to the car, correct? Sorry, yes, regarding the parking of the car, which he only knew from hearsay. Um, did you have uh, personal knowledge as to whether Mr. Copenhaver was suffering from depression? Um, yeah, I was aware that he was um, from, you know, past experience in his childhood. Yeah. Um, what, what was it that you became aware of? His childhood? Objection on relevance. Come on up.
but without getting into the context of it um, or your the basis of your knowledge, you said that you did know that he was um, uh, suffering from depression. Is that correct? Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, what about anxiety? Yes. Um, and was it at all common um, to experience Mr. Copenhaver having outbursts at the gym? Um, no. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, Mr. Copenhaver's power, um, his striking power. Uh, how would you describe his striking power? Um, pretty strong. Fair. <coughs> how would you compare it to uh, most of the fighters that you train with? Um, well, it all depends, you know, because every fighter is different weight, you know, so some guys hit harder than other guys just because they weigh more, you know, but we're all trained properly, so we know how to apply techniques, so obviously the guy that knows the technique also, but it's a little bit heavier, is, is going to hit harder. And did Mr. Copenhaver have that technique that you're talking about to lay a heavy punch? Yeah, of course. Yes, um, I'd like to talk to you about Mr. Copenhaver's ability to apply a chokehold. Um, in rolling with Mr. Copenhaver, you had stated, I'm going to take a step back, you had stated before that it could take several minutes to choke somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're talking about several minutes to choking somebody, are you talking about actually grappling with somebody and them resisting and fighting back? Is that what yes. you're referring to? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, yeah. so let's take that factor out for a second. Mm -hmm. And let's say you have a clean, rear naked choke on somebody. How long would it take in having somebody in a clean, rear naked choke with the crease of your elbow to their throat, how long would that take to pass somebody up? Objection, Your Honor. Same issue as before. We'll clarify what I was referring to. I'm correct. Only based yes. on personal experience. Based upon your personal experience. Uh, based upon my per and you mean like they're just standing there and they let you apply it? That's correct. Do you oh. have any experience with that? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, oh, well, I mean, I don't have anyone say, hey, go and choke me, but uh, <laughs> sorry, you know, but yeah, I mean, if they stand there and it could take you know pretty quick it could go pretty quick because you're cutting blood circulation oxygen to the brain so once you cap that off it could be pretty good it's like a knockout you know a knockout you hit them there so do you get a range of time are we talking less than 10 seconds yeah for sure um if somebody has let's say they held their breath prior to a choke being applied or mm -hmm. if they've exhaled and exhausted their breath their breath prior to a choke, would that also play a factor into how quickly they can go out? Definitely, because there's no oxygen at all inside. Now, in your experience in uh, grappling with John, when John would apply a clean choke, mm -hmm. um, I believe that that's referred to as locking it in. Yes. Uh, once John would lock in a choke on either you or anybody else at the uh, studio at that time, um, were you able to escape, uh, escape the choke once he uh, locked it in? Not always. <laughs> and how difficult was that to escape? Uh, pretty hard. And yeah. that was hard for you? Yeah, that was hard, definitely. Yeah. Um, and would you say that the once Copenhaver locks in a choke on you, well, what was your likelihood of being able to escape that? Um, if I didn't tap, then, then I, like you said, I would go unconscious, you know, trying to fight it off. So if he locked it in on you, you're not getting out of that? Yeah, some guys are more hard-headed than others, you know, like um, in training, you know, they try to hold it off as long as they can, and sometimes your body just goes. And let, let me specify what I mean by okay. getting out. Um, I don't mean being able to tap right. and get out, uh, so sorry I misspoke on that. Uh, when I say get out, I mean break his choke. Uh, once oh, he yeah. locks it in, are you able to break Mr. Copenhaver's choke? No. Uh, was anybody in your dojo able to get out of Mr. Copenhaver's choke after the choke is locked in. Yeah, some people have. Yeah. And I don't remember exactly who, but yeah, some people And have. out of, let's say, approximately 100 chokes, um, once the choke's locked in, how many chokes out of 100 chokes would you say that, um, that you'd be able to escape out of Mr. Copenhaver's locked in choke? Out of 100? Oh, maybe half, because you get tired eventually. Yeah. Okay. And um, you've been training for how long? Um, for uh, since I was 13, 14. Uh, extensive amount of training? Yes. You're a professional fighter? Yes. You have extensive training in jiu-jitsu? Yes. You have extensive training in breaking chokes? Yes. And um, let's say your students who are not so uh, experienced, let's say, for example, you just have a high school wrestling experience and maybe two years of jiu-jitsu. If you're placed in Mr. Copenhaver's choke, is it of your opinion that you could break that choke? Yeah. And, uh, and what about if the choke is locked in? 
Um, yeah, it's possible. Uh, with adrenaline and desperation of, you know, shaking and moving, you know, you could offset the position and they could fall off. Yeah, it's possible, of course. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Recross? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Okay, next. I swear the testimony you're about to give this action be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self to God. I do. Thank you. Let me see it. You state your complete name, spelling both your first and last name for records. Maybeth Andrade, M A Y B E T H A N D R A D E. Thank you. And just before you begin, I want to, the jurors may have seen Ms. Andrade in the courtroom. The parties had agreed that she would be able to testify even though she was in the courtroom part of the time. <coughs> Go ahead. Okay, the defense is going to offer 646 through 661. Any objections? No. They're admitted? Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Ms. Andrade, did you uh, go out to what was formerly Christine McIndae's residence on Puebla? Yes. Okay. And did you take some pictures when you were there? Yes. All right. Um, before I start with those pictures, in 646, I'm going to come on out. What is that? My tennis shoe. <laughs> Why did you take a picture of your tennis shoe? Um, I didn't have any measuring tools with me when I went out there, I forgot. And I stepped, I, so I measured with my shoe, pretty much. The distance between the balcony and the front door of the next door neighbor. Um, let me back up a second. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm an investigator, private investigator. And have you been hired to work for Mr. Copenhagen? Yes. All righty. Going back to the shoes. Or, I'm sorry, what, what is this? That's my tennis shoe, again, uh, next to a ruler. Okay, so it looks like it's about 11 inches? Roughly, yes. Now, here we go. In which number? 648. That last one was 647, Your Honor. We're going in order. In 648, what does this say picture of? It's uh, the front of the house of where Ms. McIndy used to live. Okay. And I see it's like a straight, uh, straight angle? Yes. Did you take this picture? Yes. Is this picture a true, accurate, uh, and complete depiction of? the front of Ms. McAdee's house? Yes. Or a portion thereof? Yes. Okay, going to the next in order, what does this appear to be a picture of? Uh, it's a picture if you're facing the house of the right side of the street. Uh, same street, same? Yes. Okay. Is this, oh, I'm not, I'm not. This that I'm pointing to right here, what is this? That's the house, the same house. The corner of the house? Yeah, the corner of the house. Next in order, 
Uh, you took this picture? Yes. So are these all true, complete, and accurate depictions of what you took? Yes. All right, and did you take all the pictures where you, you, you're aware of what pictures we're about to go through? Yes. Did you take all of them? Yes. All right. Uh, this, another picture of Ms. McEnany's house? Yes. And can you see this down there? Well, let me see. Okay. Three four nine six. And is that Ms. McIndy's former address? Yes. Next in order, just for report's <coughs> sake, six fifty one. What is this, man? Um, the other corner of the house. And this. Same thing. Um showing both the corner of the balcony and the next door neighbor. I'm noticing something here, and I understand there are other pictures of it, but I'm noticing something over here. What is that? The garage. The Ms. McAnee's garage? Uh, no, the next door neighbor's. If you're facing the house, the left side. Okay, and that's the, um, is there a door on that garage? No. Completely open? Yes. And by a door, I mean not, not just the door is up. I mean, is there a door at all? Not that I saw, no. And this? Um, just a close-up of the same picture. All right. And six, that's 653. 654. Both houses? Yes. And I'm pointing here. What is this? It's um, the brick divider between both houses. A little kind of concrete. Yeah. Maybe not a fence, but. No, it's not a fence. It's 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 not open like this other one. It's actual brick. And is this that same thing, just from a, a slightly different angle to Correct. the left? Correct. And uh, why don't I have you describe this? This is, I'm obviously standing closer to the home. Um, so it's primarily the garage and up, up, um, above the garage is a balcony. And then the next door neighbors, you can see directly the door, the front door. Okay, and um, so it's where I'm pointing, is that the front yes. door? And this, is this the same? It's the brick wall and it goes into a little side walk to, towards the, the back of the house. And what is this depicting? Uh, this is, that's the next door neighbor, so you're looking at it from upstairs. Okay, and by upstairs, is this the top of the balcony that we've seen before? Yes. And this over here, I, I believe there's a picture maybe coming up. Is this the, um, uh, it's the railing of uh, steps coming yes. up to the that floor? Yes. What is this? The backyard of Ms. McAndy's home. All right, and pointing over here? The swimming pool. And then pointing over here? The fence that leads into the um, golf part. Golf, the golf course? Yeah. Okay. Um, in particular to exactly where I'm pointing and where I'm outlining. That's the door. The commonly called the gate? Yeah. All right. And then what is this that I'm pointing to? It's some sort of level, uh, maybe like a little plank thing. It's, it's connected to the, the cement, but it's more like a um, rock, maybe? Okay. And um, underneath I see is perhaps cement? Yeah. And this goes all the way up to the fence? It goes all the way up to the fence. And creates a shorter area between the top of the fence Correct. and the yard? Yes. Did you measure that area? Um, which one? The, uh, the area I was just talking about. This. this I area. did from the other side. Okay. We'll get there. <laughs> and uh, this picture? Um, it's the same thing, just more towards the left. 
It's, it's right. the same backyard. So if um, we're talking about what we've called the plank, that would be toward yeah. this side? Correct. Um, motioning to the no. right. Yes, thank you. Okay. And who is this in the shot? <laughs> Me. All right. And from what, well, do me a favor, describe what I'm looking at. So you're looking at the wall, the fence, half wall, half fence, from, if you would have taken that little um, <coughs> sidewalk on the left side of the house and walked all the way back. So that's what divides what would be the front yard from the backyard. Okay. And when you say on the left side, from the front to the back, would that be passing under the, um, that balcony that was formally described and past the steps that I, I showed the yes. corner of? And who is this young lady? <laughs> Me. All right, that's as far out as we can go. Um, what is that on top of uh, or behind you? The same wall fence that you just showed me. All right, is this in front of what we've termed the plank? No. All right, where, like what part of the yard is so this? So this would be what would be facing towards the front yard, passing that, um, the stairs and the balcony. The left side of the house? Yes. And is this wall that I'm pointing to, is that the same wall that continues? That extends all the way. The, yes. the brick wall that we've yes. discussed? that is correct. All right, um, Your Honor, then we're offering 662 to 684. No Any objection, Your Honor. Thank you, they're admitted. And may I publish? Yes. Okay, starting with 662. That appears to be the same picture, but you with a piece of paper taped up. Correct. How tall are you? Five one. And do you have a measurement on the piece of paper? I don't. It's a normal legal pad, eight and a half by eleven inches. So you do have a oh. measurement. <laughs> All right. And you're about three or four inches into that. Correct. So. somewhere in the neighborhood of five to ten maybe the fences, <coughs> something like that. Perhaps. All right. And then on this one, is that the same thing but farther away? Yeah, just so you can see that I'm not standing on anything. Okay. And who took this picture? Uh, my sister did. What are we looking at here? The front of the house towards the left side. Again, you can see the, the brick wall, the balcony, the garage, the front door of the next door neighbor, and the window. And is this what you've described as the, the left side of the house? Correct. And would this be kind of the, the, the front little sidewalk path? thing? Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop here for a second. I'm noticing all these pictures are from the outside of the house and not f and from areas that are accessible from the street. Is that fair to say? Correct. And um, we'll get to some pictures from the other side from the golf course. Is yes. that a yes? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Did you? Um, is that house for sale? Yes. Did you try to get inside? Yes. Did the owner deny you? Mm, not necessarily. We did get approved. We scheduled a time to meet. Just nobody showed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's sort of a pocket feed up. Right. All right, so you weren't able to get into the house in any accessible areas to take pictures? Correct. Okay, this is a bit different. What is this? So the pictures, that one and this one and the next one, um, I was taking a picture of what I used to measure. So <laughs> just so I could keep track when I did my measurements. So when I walked to measure between the balcony and the front door, 
I use that little step where the balcony begins up into the wall, and then right here from the wall all the way to the front steps, the front, the patio steps. Okay, and when you, and this is you, you paste it off with those. Correct, with my with those shoes. And do you recall uh, approximately what the distance was? Um, so I went online and I researched how much approximately uh, inches my size seven tennis shoe would have been, and it's about 11, uh, I'm sorry, about nine and a half, 10 inches. So that gives me about 100 feet, give or take, could be less, more. Best estimate. Correct. <coughs> Whose uh, shadow is this? Me. Okay, what are we looking at? It's the same thing, just trying to keep my measurements in order. And the, just to, to keep track, 668, uh, what is this? The same thing, just I was trying to make sure I caught all the way up until where the steps ended. <coughs> all righty, something, this is something new, yes? Yes. Okay, well, what are we looking at? So this is the gate that's on the side, and the backyard on the side of where the golf course is. And I see you have the piece of paper up. Correct. What, um, <coughs> and you're five one. <coughs> and I notice your hair is just a little bit over the fence. Yes. Uh, it appears that the fence is right about exactly five feet high. Correct. And this, Next to you, is this the, um, That's the, plank the plank thing? Yeah. All right. And you can see the cement there? Yes. <coughs> All right. And behind that are sliding doors leading to the backyard? Yes. This, uh, what is this? It's the same thing, but I'm focusing on the actual sliding door. Okay, and do you know this to be, um, or I guess whether this is uh, formally in Ms. McIndae's room? I believe it is, but I, I don't know for a fact. And when you say you believe it, in, is it believe it is, is that based on your review of the reports in this case? Correct. All righty. This is relatively the same thing as the last picture? Yes. Anything noteworthy to comment on? I mean, you can see the plank, because that, that's exactly where I was at. Um, but other than that, no. Okay. And just uh, to be clear, the plank is a direct shot from the uh, slider? Yes. And are you sort of reaching your hand over through the fence to take this? Yes. And this is what we've been calling the plank? Yes. And you can notice the concrete below it? Correct. And this would be the fence? Yes. That's actually the, the gate. Oh, okay. And there's, um, to, to this side of the gate, is it fair to say there's an extremely large golf course? Yes. And is, you were able to get into the golf course? Yes. Is it a public course? I don't know. Meaning, can anyone just go on and play? I, or is it a, I, I don't know. I, I requested permission to get on, I don't know. Who did you request permission from? Um, the gentleman that was at the front desk that kind of approves people to get in, I would assume. So you, you have to be approved to get in? I, I showed my license and they, they allowed us on, yes. So that would tend to, or, to militate against the idea that this was a public course that anyone could just walk onto and play? 
It wasn't blocked off. People were going on and off. I don't know if they were just members that just kind of knew. So I, I, I don't know. Okay. And just to, to keep place, 674, that uh, sort of the same yes. view but a slightly different angle? Yes. And next in order, almost identical? Yes. And next in order, can you describe this? So this is more, if you're facing the house, it's more towards the left. It's more sliding door windows. Um, there's the pool and the jacuzzi. Okay, and these over here by the pool, these are sliding doors? They seem to be sliding doors, yes. All right, um, and that appears to be blinds on the other side? Yes. Are you able to tell if this is a bedroom? No, you can't see him. And then where in relation to this is, are the other sliding doors? If you're looking at it like this, to the right side. <clears throat> okay, is this the fence that you would, were kind of standing on the other side with a piece of paper yes. behind your head earlier? Yes. And, and again, this is the, uh, the wall. concrete wall between the houses? Yes. I'm not getting numbers on any of Oh, uh, 677. So this would be 678. Different angle, same thing? Yes. 679. So clearer picture of the uh, room and the sliders? Yes. Six eighty. Same Different thing, angle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Six eighty one instead of. That's the um, sliding doors. That you want to? Yeah. Six eighty two. Same thing. Just zoomed up. Is this a, are you able to tell, is this what I'm pointing at next to the sliders, is this a window or a door? From what I could see, it's a window. I think this is 685, 683. And what is this? So, I don't know if I can... You can touch it. Oh, you can oh, okay. touch it. And, and um, so this... It, this is the uh, plank type thing. Then it comes down, and this is the the door, the the gate. <coughs> Same thing, just zoomed in. And this. that's it. Thank you. Pass the witness. Cross. Just a few questions for you. Okay. Um, when were these photos taken? Uh, Sunday afternoon. Okay. And you were unable to go inside, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and do you recall the name of the individual you spoke to to try to get inside? I believe it was Leonette. Are you looking at your notes? That's fine if you are. Oh, Just yes. I'm okay. sorry. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it was Leonette. Lynette? Uh, Leonette. Leonette, okay. Uh, and as far as you know, Ms. McAdee is not associated with the house at the time you took these pictures. As far as I know, she wasn't or isn't. All right. Um, I just had a couple questions. I got a little bit confused a little bit on the layout. So, okay. and actually looking at these a lot up personal and close, I can see them a little bit more clear. I think it's getting distorted with the uh, transmission over the um, TV. So just let me ask you just a couple questions here. Okay. Um, Let's start with this picture here. 653, 
this um, portion up here, what is this like a balcony area? Yeah, it's like a balcony. Okay. And um, do you know where these, is this a slider or a window? Uh, no, it's, it's sliding doors. Sliding doors, okay. Yeah. And do you know what those um, doors lead to? No, I don't. So you don't know if it's the master bedroom or not? No. Okay. There are a couple more pictures regarding there. Up here when you're on the, um, the balcony area, is it all gated in or is it free open? Is there like a gate or? There's a gate. You can go up the stairs, but it's blocked off at the gate. All right, and maybe this is the picture I got a little bit lost on. 657. Is this the gate over here on the left-hand side? Yes. Okay. And so this left-hand, or this gate over here, it opens and closes. Correct. Okay. Uh, how <laughs> tall is the gate itself? Is it, is it up to the hips? Um, probably my rib page. Okay. All right. Um, and then where does this balcony or porch end? Is it, it appears to me that this is on the side of the house. This corner here is That's on the correct. side of the house. Correct. Okay. How far down the left side of the house does it go? I don't know. Um, I would say maybe about 20 steps down. So going down, I don't know how far out that extends. Okay. All right. As far as you know, um, you don't know how the backyard has changed since August 8th of 2014? No, I don't. Um, the, do you recall the left wall towards the backyard? Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Is like that facing the house? If you are, um, yes, if you're facing the house, there's a wall on the left-hand side. It's the brick wall? Yes. Okay. Um, here's a good picture. Let's talk about this one. 678. This wall here. Yes. All right. Um, it appears that it's kind of tiered or there's different levels on that wall. Correct. Okay. So at some points it's shorter and at some points it's taller. Correct. Um, and it's your belief just so I'm clear, this is 682. It's your belief that these sliders, uh, if you enter these sliders, you would be entering the master bedroom or the crime, the primary crime scene. Yes. Okay. And again, you don't know if there was a gate around this or not at the time of the incident. Correct. Can I pass the Thank you. Redirect.